So, part C. Part C. Let's find the total flight time for this object being thrown off a cliff. And in case you forgot, for part A and part B, we had this object going off of a cliff. We know that its vertical displacement is 25 meters downwards by the time it lands again. We've called down negative and up positive. I want to figure out what the total flight time is. Now earlier on in this problem, we figured out how much time it takes to get to this point here. I'm just going to call it time A. Now we need to figure out how long it takes to get from time A to time B. And if I know how long it takes to get to time A, and then I figure out how long it takes to get from time A to time B, what do I do to those two values? Add them up. Yep. Add them up. A-T-U. Add them up. All right. I don't know why we're looking So I'm going to label up delta T A, which we found once before. What was it? Do you remember? It's 0 0.802? Yes. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 0 0.802 seconds, and we found that by calculating how long it takes to get back down to the same height again. And now we want to find delta T B. So I'm going to set this off to the side. That's some information for later. As I start going along this portion of the journey, I'm going to call this velocity in the y direction v1y. So I'm going to start a new journey from point A to point B. And starting at point A, v1y has a value. We've actually already stated what it is. Do you remember what it was? It was 3.933 meters per second down. Do you remember that? So we say v1y is equal to 3.933 meters per second. Negative. Negative. Thank you. V2y, we don't happen to know, but I'll write it down anyway. Don't know. Don't care. Acceleration in the y direction is equal to, again, 9 point... Oh, I keep on calling it acceleration y. Acceleration gravity. Negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Displacement in the y direction is, again, negative 25.0 meters, because we're going the whole shebang all the way down now. And I would like to know delta t. Yes, sir. Shouldn't v1y be positive since it was positive in the question? No, what we said was by, by the argument of symmetry, it's going to be the same magnitude. Right. But because whatever goes up must come down, it might be the same magnitude, but it's going to be in the opposite direction. Right. So we call it, kind of call it anti-symmetry. But, it, but we, we sort of know what we mean by that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we've got a v1y for just this portion now that we're going to call 3.933. I know we called v1y something else before, but now we're just talking about this portion. Okay? We don't really want to know v2y, so I'm going to cross that guy out. But we do know one, two, three pieces of information. And again, anytime you know three pieces of information for the, the, a, a y motion, you can figure out a fourth. So is there an equation that you be knowing that would help us to get delta t if you know v1y, ay, and delta dy? What's one? Hmm. I can tell you one. Delta D equals V1 delta T plus one half A delta T squared. Can you see that I, I want to know T? I know A. I know V1 and I know delta D. Can you see that I could solve for T? What type of, type of equation is this? Starts with a Q. Quadratic. It is a quadratic. If I bring that delta D over to the right hand side of that equal sign, I'll have zero equals a quadratic, and I can use the quadratic formula to do it. Now, some people will look at that and say, Woohoo! Christmas came early. I love quadratics. Some people will say that. Okay? Other people will say, Uh uh. Quadratics and me, not best friends. Okay? Quadratics beat me up behind the portables after school every Wednesday all the way through grade 10. This is what I want to do. This is what I want to do. Instead of using the quadratic method, although you're free to do it, and I actually, frankly, I do the quadratic method, but if that's something that you don't feel really good about and you had that bullying experience, experience with this equation, here's what I would do. Shh. Remember what I said before. Anytime you have three 
values, you can solve for a fourth. And anytime you have four values, it really opens up your possibilities here. Instead of jumping straight to delta t, I'm going to find v2y just for kicks and see what happens, okay? So v2y, if I happen to find v2y before I find delta t, just for fun, let's see what opportunities it opens up for me, okay? So I know acceleration, I know displacement, I know v1y. I think I would probably use v2 squared equals v1 squared plus 2a delta d. Square rooting both sides. Yes, ma'am. How does it, well, you know what, I don't want to do the aside right now. I can show you afterwards. And I, I've showed, uh, I showed people sort of before, but probably forgot because it was a couple weeks ago. But I can show you again afterwards, okay? It is a quadratic though, if we do a little bit of simplification. All right, subbing in values, V2 is equal to negative 3.933 meters per second. Remember, square the whole darn thing, including the negative sign, plus 2 times negative 9.81 meters per second squared times delta D, which is negative 25. It's starting to look like maybe I should have called down positive, but you know, I started off calling down negative in part A and I didn't want to change. All square rooted. And if there's a quick draw on the calculator. 22.5373. 22.5373. These are the kind of people I rely on on a daily basis. Did anybody else get that? Yeah. 22.5373 meters per second. Okay. Now, if I wanted to round it off, I could round it off. But I don't really want to round it off too much. 22.537 is as far as I dare go because I'd like to use that V2 value. And now I'm going to ask myself the question, self, if I know V2, <laughs> right? If I know V2, and I know delta dy, and I know A, and I know V1y, now is there a really sweetheart equation that doesn't force me to use quadratics that can get me to the T? Yes, sir. V2 minus V1 over A. I like it. So I could use A equals V2 minus V1 over delta T. Isolate for delta t. I'm, I just want to do the baby steps. I know what you're saying. Delta t is equal to v2 minus v1 over a. Sub in my values. This is lovely. I don't even have to deal with the quadratic. So v2, 22.537 meters per second. Now wait a minute. Is this a downward velocity or an upwards velocity at the, when it hits the ground? Oh my gosh. When something hits the ground, it's 22.537 meters per second. It's down, but this is positive. Whatever could have happened? Remember that old rule when you do a square root of something? The answer is always plus or minus. Oh, shoot. So this was actually plus or minus, but we have to make a decision in this context. Which one of those is meaningful, the plus or the minus? The minus. So we're just going to call it negative 22.537. And so then later on when we plug it in, when we sub it in, negative 22.537. Remember, there's admissible answers sometimes and there's inadmissible answers when you get these uh, two answer solutions for, for finding square roots. Anyway, the admissible answer is negative. Minus V1, the V1 was equal to negative, so minus the negative. People always forget about the plus or minus when they square root values. But it is important in the context of the story. Minus means something here. Divided by negative 9.81 meters per second squared is equal to 2.698? Yeah. 698 seconds. Now that's great. That delta t value though that's not the total time, that's the time to get from A to B. So that's not the whole thing. It's just part of the story. As we said earlier, if I want to find out the total time, it's going to be delta T A plus delta T B. No problem, 0 0.802 seconds. That's the time it took to get from this height back to the same height? Yes, sir. For delta T, B, I got 1.989. Oh, no. 
I listened to the wrong guy. That's okay, I haven't written too much yet. What was the delta T value? 1.896. 1.896? Does anybody want to second that motion? Okay, the motion carries. 1.896 seconds. Good thing we didn't write too much. 1.896 seconds. That's okay, life goes on and mistakes happen. Are you going from that far right to the kind of left corner? Yes, we're over here now. Where are we? Okay, and so 0 0.802 seconds plus 1.896 seconds. I'm just trying to keep it all on one page so we don't jump around too much. What's the total? Two point six nine eight seconds, and if we round it off to the three sig digs, we're left with approximately two point seven zero seconds. Okay, so the whole thing two point seven zero seconds from start to finish. And then some people are going to say, "What more could we do?" No, well. I, I can hear in the back. I, I know that Sean is back there just wondering, what else can we tackle here? Thanks, Sean. I'm glad you brought that up, Sean. Thank you so much, Sean. Um, what I really wanted to bring up at this point was finding the final impact velocity. We could find out what the final impact velocity is. So we've gone all the way through this projectile motion. We found out previously, so let's state it, find the impact velocity. We found out previously that V2y, that is the final velocity down here, we, we found it in part C just to make our lives easier, was equal to 22.537 meters per second. We call that V2y. And way back at the beginning, I think it was even in part A, before part A, we found out that V, we found out what V1x was equal to. We said that way back here, V1x was equal to 10.81 meters per second. What do you think V2x is? 10.81 meters per second. It didn't change. You know that because? Because things don't accelerate or, or oh, slow okay. down in the horizontal. Because gravity only operates in the vertical. So we say that V2x is equal to 10.81 meters per second. And now if I want to know what the final impact velocity is, that's V2. And of course, whenever I find out the total of two vectors that are two-dimensional, I say V2y added to V2x, tip to tail, not necessarily to scale. Well, this is, yeah, thank you. You're right, it is negative. That could give me V2. Or I could have written V2x plus V2y tip to tail. Here's the thing. People that do V2y plus V2x are going to find out an angle relative to the vertical in the end. People that do V2x plus V2y are going to end up finding a theta value that's relative to the horizontal in the end. Which one do we want? Horizontal. Yeah, the horizontal. So this is the one I would prefer if it was me, and it is me. I would add up the vectors in the order x plus y rather than y plus x, just because in the picture the theta value is going to pop out at you better. The theta that you want relative to the horizon. Pop. Exactly. So we're looking for v2. And v2 is equal to v2x squared plus v2y squared. So the order doesn't matter for calculating the magnitude, but you'll see in a second why it matters for finding the theta if you haven't sort of seen it already in your head. Uh, V2x squared is going to be 10.81 meters per second all squared plus 
And again, since it's going to be negative 22.537 meters per second squared, I'm going to drop the negative because I know that negative squared just gives me a positive anyway. So plus 22, if you choose to put the negative in there, that's okay. Live life dangerously. Ten point eight one squared plus twenty two point five three seven squared. Twenty four point nine nine five. I'm going to write it down, but I'm going to ask for somebody to second the motion. I second it. Burned once, shame on me. Burned twice, shame on me as well. Okay, meters per second. Twenty four. Twenty four point nine five meters per second. Yep. 24.95 meters per second. And now, since this is a, a velocity, we also need the theta value. And so if I'm looking for this theta value here, the opposite is V2y, and the adjacent is V2x. And I just calculated V2, so I'm not as, as confident about it. So I think I'm going to use tan theta here. Yes, sir? So for 995. Oh, it's 995? Oh, 24.995. Okay. Tan theta is equal to opposite, V2y over adjacent v2x or theta is equal to tan inverse of same values v2y over v2x theta is equal to did anybody do it already 25.62 okay anybody want to second it nobody is willing to second the motion yet I'll write it out. I'll write out the numbers then, just to make sure. V two y twenty two point five three seven. And for goodness sake, uh, use the positive values because you're just solving a geometry problem. Don't sub in the negative values for V two y and V two x here, or for V two y rather. In just this case, save yourself a headache. All right. Uh oh, 64.37? Yeah, you may have your calculator on radians. We'll, we'll, we'll look into it. It's okay. All right, so 64.38 or approximately 64.4 degrees. Now, if I want to find the final impact velocity, which is what was actually asked of me, therefore, the impact velocity is... We said 24.03 sig digs. 20, it's going to be approximately equal to 25.0 meters per second. Sorry, we should have done that earlier. It is 25.0 meters per second, 64.4 degrees below horizontal. Okay, not a problem. Now, I heard somebody say, let's do a part E. Can I, can, <laughs> can I tell you? Yeah, it was Heather, I'll tell you right now. Um, if we were to do a part E, which we're not, it might be something along the lines of what, what is the range for this launch? If I wanted to find the range for this launch, what time would I use? In other words, how long is it in the air for between this point and this point? Where would I get that time from? From part C. Where would I get the velocity from to figure out that displacement? It's just this value right here, right? The horizontal velocity, it doesn't change. And I could do the calculation delta D equals V average times delta T, where V average doesn't change, it's the same value all the way across. Bingo, bango. That would be a great part E if I was going to make this a, a party test. You would want to use the displacement down, right? You would, do, you would be finding the displacement horizontally if you're finding the range. Right. Okay? Good.